Hello and welcome to today's edition of Ask the Expert. We, uh, besides asking experts about the topics that they're um, experts in, we also have another series that we would like to include in this, uh, and this is a, com a series of conversations with dancers, dancers who have gone through the experience of Youth America Grand Prix and who are now experts in how a dancer can get into the company, how a dancer can realize their dreams. So today's guest has first participated in YAGP in 2008. And today, uh, many of you may know him as a first soloist with the Royal Ballet. So um, today's guest and guest expert is Marcelino Sambe. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for making the time to, to drop by because you're here for a Balanchine program. It's an old Balanchine program at New York City Center. So there's Mariinsky, the Royal, and uh, Miami City Ballet, and of course New York City Ballet. So it's a huge celebration of George Balanchine. How is it? Uh, how does it feel to be a part of this grand celebration? Well, I, I do identify myself with Balanchine repertoire quite a lot. I think it's such a, an incredible choreography to really lose yourself and really give your, all your personality. So I really love it. And to see all the other companies doing the same, it's quite inspiring. And I feel like with Balanchine Repertory, you really have to give 100% to really commit and really to do, do the choreography properly. So it's good to see all the companies coming together to do so. You gave 100%. <laughs> I saw you last night. You were fantastic. It was just you. this joy of dancing. That's, see, that's the one thing, actually, that I actually remember you in 2008. And you were a tiny little dancer back then. I think you were... 13, right? Yeah, 13. Yes, you were 13, and, and you did Harlequinade. And everybody just thought it was the cutest thing ever. So uh, the joy of dancing is actually what we all noticed mm -hmm. right away. So, um, and, and it was still evident last night. So, um, so that, that's a, a good point for all, all the dancers watching. If you have the joy of dancing, it can take you far. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I feel like I've never really let go of that side of me. I think that that's my strength, and that's what naturally came to me when I was very young. And I made sure that that's something that stays because it's very important to never try to become someone else. You have to be true to who you are, really. It's true. It's true. And you definitely have a lot of personality. Well, um, t uh, take us back to 2008, to that first time okay. you participated. So I was um, training at the um, National Conservatory of Lisbon. And my directors were incredible. From the beginning, they really nurtured me a lot. They uh, took me to several competitions, but not so much to compete and to win and to be the best, but really to to learn and get experience and to see what was happening outside. And um, it, uh, it it was incredible to go to. The first time I actually was involved in a YGP experience was in Italy, in a, in a semi-final before the finals in New York, in Firenze and um, Bologna, which was incredible. It was my first time outside Portugal. And I got to meet Larissa, uh, and um, she said I, I, I won a prize then, and uh, then I got a chance to come to New York. And the first time I came to New York was so 2008, and I had never been to America. Suddenly, I'm in like the biggest, like most incredible city ever, and um, I met so many young dancers that today I'm friends with, and we were all competing together. Uh, some of the colleagues came to came to London as well later and we shared rooms together so from that from coming here it felt like I was creating um, roots uh, in the world of dance uh, being in New York and in a YGP experience and uh, it wasn't overwhelming it was super exciting and I felt like I was doing more of a show rather than a competition so I felt like the audience was really friendly and every time I heard uh, a dancer before me before I go and go perform myself getting a huge clap, it actually made me so excited, it made me so um, ready to go, because I was like, I was absorbing all that amazing positive energy. Right. And he um, really took that fear of performing out of me. I was like, okay, I'm in New York, I have nothing to lose, you just really have to show who you are and do what you do at home in Portugal, and yeah, that was... That was incredible, actually. Kind of. See, that's so nice to hear because for so many, you know, they, they treat it as a competition mm -hmm. versus what it is, which is an, an audition, really. It's a chance yeah. to perform and to enjoy being on stage. It's a show. I felt like blocked all the competition side because obviously there were kids my own age that were so advanced beyond their years. And it was quite kind of, I could have taken it in an intimidating way, but actually I thought like, wow, I'm in the same group as these incredible dancers. and. Right. Uh, I get a chance to witness their talents develop in front of me and I'm with them as well so I felt like it was super inspiring rather than anything else 
and I took it as a performance, really. I'm going to show what I do, and this is what I do, and I, I'm already in New York, and I'm in the finals of New York, so it was incredible. And I had teachers that were really supportive and really, like, didn't, um, didn't make me really think, okay, you must win, because there was no pressure. I, can, I was performing in New York. See, and I think if, if we talk about lessons that other dancers could take from this, if, if when you truly do it for the enjoyment of the performance, that's when you actually get the best results, when yeah. you don't think about the results. Definitely, because I wasn't the one doing most pirouettes or doing right. a 540 at age 13. No way. It was, I, like you said, the joy. I really just thought, like, okay, this is the performance. And I've always been inspired by those more artistic uh, dancers from the past. And what I always took from them was really the fact that they... They, they were a person before they were a dancer, and um, you could see, and, and all those amazing dancers that now are doing so well, I looked at them, and I, back then already, they had so much personality and so much charisma, and I remember, okay, I, sh I have to keep this. I can't let go of this. Right, right, right. Well, so what happened then? So in 2008, you came to Italy, you came to New York, you enjoyed yourself. What happened then? Uh, so uh, I, the first time that I came to New York, did the finals, I was top 12, um, and I was like, wow, this is so exciting, I can't believe I'm in top 12, and um, Larissa, Larissa was so good from the beginning at like um, advising what I should do, she told me what to work on, and we used to get these um, files of all the judges with critiques and like uh, corrections, and I thought it was so helpful, and like mm. especially I could see the ones from Royal Ballet School, the director, right. Galen Stock then, yes. the late Galen Stock, and I could see that she said, work on your feet, or didn't I? and I would take this so serious, I would go back to Portugal, and me and my coach work on these things, and if I hadn't come here, I would have never exposed myself to this kind of critique that it's not painful in any ways, because I know where I wanted to go, I wanted to be an international dancer, I wanted to go to a big company, and if you don't expose yourself from the beginning, how are you going to really... Because my teachers, they were doing the best they could, but sometimes we have a, um, um, an eye from outside that is looking subjectively and doesn't have any extra opinion from, uh, of you, really just looks at you and says, like, you've got to work on your feet or your turnout is not connected or something. And I read those things and every day I'd come back to work, uh, to, to the school and really like focus on these things. And uh, so I went back to Portugal and I felt after I came from New York, I, my technique developed immensely because I thought like, okay, I can push further. I don't have to hold back. I don't need to do a, uh, a Napoli solo forever. I can maybe push it and like try to do something a bit more challenging, really work it to see how it goes, but no pressure again. Right. I was so young, but my teacher was, I think he was inspired as well to right. be around this huge uh, array of incredible talents. And so we worked a lot. I did um, that year. That was the only competition I did. And then next year I get, came again, but straight to the finals. Right. Um, and uh, this was a different experience. I feel like I had grown so much. I was fourteen, so I was getting a bit more like at that more interesting stage of your learning career. And um, I met I met so many incredible, talented people that ended up coming to England as well later, right. like Esteban Hernandez, all right. these incredible super bravura dancers and I never really from a very young age saw myself as a bravura um, highly uh, fireworks dancer I always I always identified myself with rom romantic movement like this kind of stuff and I felt like whoa I, I want to go there so I came in and I did Flames of Paris right. and was uh, more explosive than I had anything that I'd done before and I just always kept my charisma and then I got a gold medal that day, that that um, that year because coming first and then reflecting on what you need to work, it really, I look at old videos and I think, wow, the jump that I did from one year to another, growth-wise, and that's what these competitions are about. That's why you should bring your students to, to do something like this. Take off the pressure and really uh, focus on what is important. And the importance is the growth that you can do by being exposed to what is out there. So it was inspiring to you, but it also was inspiring to your teachers, right? Yeah. Like, so it, it's, it's, it's an interesting thing that also sometimes, you know, people don't realize that just by being in the same space as some of the world's best teachers and best dancers and best students, you know, that environment creates something that then powered you through the whole next year, you said. I even think that the National Conservatory of Portugal 
Lisbon got um, got a new list of like um, of what the possibility was to take a student further. Right. And not just me; they created like incredible talents before me. There was Talmo Moreira, which did the competition a year before I went, two thousand and seven, I guess. And he brought so much energy and inspired them to be for, uh, uh, inspired the teachers to take me the next year. You know, so we all kind of started developing. Now the the school is doing so well and it creates incredible dances. So I feel like it all started by coming to here and seeing all the hot spot of people. Yeah, but it was a huge jump from one year to another. And then after that jump, uh, you got a scholarship. Yeah. So I that same that uh, after that um, experience in two thousand and nine, um, I already had like some sort of contact with uh, Miss Kellen Stock. Um, and she, she, was, she was quite interested, she offered me a summer school, so I got to like experience already the, the whole Royal Ballet vibe, Royal Ballet school vibe, and um, after that, because I did YGP, I got an invitation to go to Jackson, Mississippi as well, the competition there, which I ended up winning, and Moscow competition as well, which I did and I loved, because I always had a special connection with Russia, because my teachers were very, very Russian, right. I was very Russian trained, so being in the, at the Bolshoi was like, right. ah. yeah. especially after being in, in, uh, in New York as well, performing right. is incredible, and right. then uh, did Prilozan, and then Prilozan, of course, because Miss Scalingstock had seen me for so long, for so many years progressing, right. she offered me then the, the, the full scholarship, and, uh, and it would have never had happened if she hadn't like, had seen me, the growth that I had done throughout all, all, those, all those years, and... Yeah, it was it, it was an incredible thing. I look at YGPS with the incredible fond memories. I really do. Like he, he wasn't pressure. I remember sitting at uh, Washington Square before going to perform in the evening, in my right. and just sitting there eating a baguette or something really <laughs> like, and just like thinking, wow, I'm here. And I remember this completely sitting on the floor with my teacher, um, with the director then, Pedro Carneiro, and just um, just in awe of the whole situation and just seeing some other dancers crossing and being like, wow, I'm, I'm right. part of this. You are. It's, it's an amazing, you're part of this history, part of this legacy now, you know, because, because one thing that Youth America Grand Prix is, it's, it's kind of a family that keeps mm. growing and it's now, you know, more than 100,000 people have experienced it personally and, and more people are getting to experience it thanks to these uh, things we're doing through the videos. Uh, so, um, so a lot of dancers are actually watching this now and they're being inspired uh, by your journey. So um, if we take the journey forward, um, the year that you joined uh, Royal Ballet School, how was the adjustment from uh, Portugal to, uh, to the Royal Ballet okay, School? So that, that was quite interesting because I came in uh, from Portugal um, when I was 16 and there were, uh, the year was full of incredible dance at then YGP. So Joan Zamora was in my year, Esteban. Uh, I mean, it was a, a year full of like these international students. So I think uh, Miss Kelly Stock really thought like, like let's put the, all this generation in a year. And it was quite overwhelming in the beginning, but I always kept, um, I mean, I have incredible parents, I must say. Like, I'm so lucky. My mom and my dad have always grounded me a lot and always like, made me focus on what really is important and um, I wasn't coming to England to to be the star of anything or to um, um, be better than anyone but really to better myself and to really like focus on those three years of school and after that I could be a professional so I, my focus was really clear and um, but I must say when I arrived and I see all these incredible dancers and I was a bit like overwhelmed and thinking oh how am I going to do this but then um, I just thought what, what, is, what is important is to really focus on what your mission is. Right. And if it's three years sounds like a lot, but actually, if you focus a lot uh, on what all the classes, changing the style, because obviously my style was different. I was uh, Russian trained for so many years from the beginning. So to uh, then have different heads, different way of dancing, I started learning so much about the style as well, the style right. of the Royal Ballet. Um, the Macmillan, the choreographers that really founded the company, and I just was like, oh, I'm in love with this. I'm because I always thought I was going to dance in America. I always thought like ABT, it's like a company that I always wanted to be in, especially because I had done so much of American competitions, and right. um, and I always thought that like I think the American audiences would appreciate more my warmth and my what I had naturally. Right. But then I spent those years at school. I really like understood what the key was to get into the British 
public hearts, you know. What is that key? Uh, I think it's having a, a slow fire burning inside mm. you. So mm. it's knowing that it's always there and demonstrating it when it's necessary, not, com not always. So right. I have to really engage and know um, timing, timing of what a performance needs. So I can't be as explosive all the time. I really need to know how to... That's why I love coming here and like, right. wow, go <laughs> explode as right. much as I can because I do feel like I'm received with like complete... People are really open. Right. But I'm, it's really knowing that it, when, I, when I dance in England, is uh, what I love about it is that um, knowing that every, every little thing that I do counts and I only have one shot really to do it. So I really have to... Um, get it across very clearly and very, very honestly. Because obviously Macmillan, he, he worked intensive, uh, extensively here in, in ABT as well, and it's all about being real. And So I, I thought, when I was at school, I really thought, okay, this is what I'm gonna focus on. Focus on changing these things, and obviously I had a really good teacher as well that teach me how to play more, all this, because I had obviously, we all have our weaknesses. And if we shy away from them, uh, they'll never get better, ever. It's impossible. And you have to be really honest with yourself and say, like, what's your weakness? My weakness was that I had a very, like, kind of snatchy plie. And there was something that the school helped me through so much, how to deep my plie and jump more from my old leg rather than just a calf, stuff like that, like technical beats that I really focused on. And then after two years of being in the school, I didn't ended up not finishing the, the three-year course. I joined the company straight away, which was, like, I was mind blown. I was like, what? I cannot believe it. It is crazy. Well, and, and two things that you said are really just important, I think, for, for people out there to hear. One is that you always thought that you, because of your style, because of how, uh, maybe how you look on stage, yeah, my you, thought, height, everything. you thought that America would be a place for you, yet you end up in a place that, well, I must say, like, you weren't thinking that you were a good fit initially, yeah, 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 yet yeah. you were, right? Yeah. So, so it's interesting how we have these plans for ourselves, but we should always be open to th these plans being corrected, you know. Completely, completely. And don't build barriers. No one can put you in a box, because everyone will always try to, career-wise, you always fit something more than something else. And if you believe that 100% and let people put you in boxes, um, you'll never get out of them. So you, part of growing and being an artist, you really need to know how you are going to be intelligent enough to break through and really find your way. And I feel like that's what th that time at school, in Rabbi School, really did to me. It really like made me think, okay, if I do something a bit more like this and look, think of, uh, uh, have a different inspiration, maybe I'll be perceived differently. And that's where growth happens. And it's not always about like, I'm going to do seven pirouettes and I'm going to blow their minds. No, but it was more like, um, I'm going to stand this way and use my angle a bit better and then I'll have a different length and a different look. So it was all, it's all display and it's so interesting that you said that I'll, um, we have to really just believe and not close ourselves into corners because then we will like end up maybe have less options. And the other thing that you said was also very interesting because you said that when you came to the Royal Ballet School, your only focus was just committing to those three years because you said, that is what's, what my next goal is and, and that's the only thing I'm going to think about. Not, I'm not, I'm not going to think about being a professional. I'm just going to do my best in this period of time uh, before I become a professional. Meanwhile, it's because you focus so much on the school you got to the profession faster in two years instead of three. Yeah, I mean, it was a huge shock, but an amazing shock. Um, the school was relentlessly hard and like was, was hard work. We had so many classes and obviously my year was so intensively good. There were so many talents in that year. And um, one day I just got called to the office and said, like, you're joining in two weeks. And this was in my first, first month of the third year. And I was like, oh my god, this is happening. Wow. Okay, okay, great, let's do it. And especially my dream company as well, the Royal Ballet, and I thought, wow. Uh, and it really was because I, I didn't expect it. I wasn't thinking of getting a job. I was really just thinking of like, get yourself to the best position that you can. And being the best person you can, the best dancer you can be, it can, means different things to different dancers, you know? I, for me, I really wanted to just change my look and become like, um, have more of a dancer, dancer's no, novel in, in me, you know, and like work on things that are not natural to me, so like really 
try to uh, extend myself further than my natural ability could. And, um, but I think it's so important when you're at school to really focus on what is important. Um, try to avoid trouble. I, it's, it sounds so mum-like and dad-like and right. parent-like, but really stay away from trouble. It's, it's three years of training. If you go to an upper school, to a school to finish your graduate year, really be a nun for a while. <laughs> That's my, the best advice I can. Right. Like, don't get lost in uh, competi competing with someone else or try to be the best of the year. Like, your goal is to become the best dancer that you can be. And you, in your head, have to really think of what that dancer can be. And not just like uh, in the next three years, but in the future, what are you going to build? Uh, be careful with your health. Don't do uh, silly stuff like staying late at night in a studio practicing jumps at seven, eight at night after you've just done a, a huge day of school uh, stuff. Really focus on all the longevity of it all as well and the growth. It takes time. It's like when you put a seed uh, in, in, on, on dirt and like see the plant slowly growing. It takes time and nurturing, put the, light, the right light. You know, it's, it's a slow process. Patience is key and be really close to your parents. Communicate with them. Ask them things. Uh, don't hide. Don't try to say that you feel not feel. Say your, how how you feeling because that will be so important for your well being as well. Right. So it's 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 funny how the, these things seem such common sense in conversation, but but they not necessarily when you're in the moment when everybody else is out there, yeah. you know, competing. How the boys do like they always try to have these comp tricks competition, mm. or you know, when people are out late or partying, and you're friends, and you're young, and you're excited about life. Yet, you know, the secret to your personal success mm. was just really staying on track. Yeah, staying on track and like uh, don't get over yourself. So it's it's amazing to hear people saying like, oh, you are going to be this incredible dancer, but that puts unnecessary pressure because uh, dancers take so long to mature. Right. And I'm, I see some incredible videos at the moment. I, I've seen this Portuguese young dancer that I'm so excited about. I'm like, oh, I, and he, I can tell that he has matured very early. He has like this very natural mature, but that does not mean that someone of the same age will be ever that way because people grow at different levels and right. you have to look at yourself and really say like, okay, look, my body is not even ready for this. It's going to take a while and uh, I'm only going to be perceived as that dancer when I grow a bit more. And so it's, it's so different for everyone else. So that's why it's so hard to compare someone else, compare yourself to other dancers because everyone has such different journeys and different growth times. So I've seen this uh, colleagues of mine that I, when I joined the school, I looked at them and thought like, oh my God, it's going to be so hard for them. God, they don't have natural ability, and then now they are incredible principals doing extraordinary things with their bodies that the bodies didn't allow to do at that age. So right, so you have to honor your natural rhythm, and, yeah, and rhythm, your, and 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 your body's nature's mm -hmm. way of you know allowing you to 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 do what you can when you can and not mm -hmm. rush things because that's how people burn out and. And, um, and like yeah, and injure themselves, injure and, themselves and yeah yeah so so th this must have been an, an incredible moment so here you are set for th the third year of school instead two weeks in you get called in well okay you're um, joining the company what do you do then like I cried a lot I cried a lot called my mom my mom was obviously in tears because right. she, that she knew that that was my goal of the right. whole time you just get a really nice contract join a company and really build a career and I said okay great. joining early in a company is not easy because you're 18 and obviously because I was a nun for so long when I joined uh, the company I was like oh my god freedom and I can now really experience everything and like um, being a student till late and try all these things and I'm going to push myself the hardest and I'm going to show them every day that I can do this and I'm deserving of these spots and obviously, like, you have to be careful, like, again, I get it, like, but, like, it was, it was, like, the happiest moment of my life. And I joined with Anna Rose, which um, is a colleague of mine that we joined together, and now we're dancing so much together, so we've had this amazing journey together throughout the years. So me and her, we joined together at the same time, and I remember that day we went uh, to a spa, because we were so, like, 
<laughs> crying and we, we didn't need to go to school anymore because we were going to join like in a week or so later so um, we, we did our class and then the next thing was like you don't need to come to the rehearsal or the part of the class you can go and we're like oh let's go to spa <laughs> so it was was an incredible I think we deserved it after like that relentless like hard-working um, years at the school was 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 incredible Anna Rose was the partner that you danced uh, Tarn Tell with. Yes, yes. So you guys have a wonderful chemistry. And so did she also uh, not get to complete her third year? Yes, she was a, a Royal Ballet, complete Royal Ballet school baby. She started from like the, how do you, how do you call, the little kids, like from, from a very young age mm. into the um, White Lodge and then did the all White Lodge and then upper school and then did almost all upper school and then joined the right. second. Does that happen often when people don't finish? Well, it's quite, well, it's rare. It's really rare. I feel like as, I, since uh, something has happened yet. But yeah, because, yeah, but I mean. Why, why does it happen? I'm just curious. You know, I feel is like it the because... company, I feel like company needed dancers like us was the lucky time as well. It's the luck of the draw. So you can't uh, expect these things to happen. These things happen because I feel like they needed two smaller dancers. Right, so, so, so it is an exception. So just for people out there watching, yeah. they shouldn't expect not yeah, to complete yeah, yeah, their yeah. third it's year. It's an exception, an exception. If they're really good, I think no, it was an exception. So the, the company was in the turning point. There were different director, right. uh, some dancers that retired. So I think they needed two dancers and uh, uh, we right, slot right in. in. So we were like, uh, I just felt very lucky. I was like, don't do anything wrong now. Come on, right, right, be right. strong. So, so, that, so that is an incredible, again, um, testament to the power of concentration. The one thing you concentrated on was being the best you could possibly mm -hmm. be, and that is what got you to your end result faster than you ever had dreamed possible. Yeah. So, so you, you you now are um, you know with the company. Uh, so, how many years has it been now that you've been? Uh, I've been in a company for six years, and it's going to be my seventh six, season. Seventh season. So it it goes really fast. It goes right. so fast and. What I must say, you must enjoy every uh, every aspect of being in a company because it takes a lot of time in the beginning. The biggest advice that I can give is focus 100% in rehearsals because everything is quicker than in a school. So they show the dance once and then you need to go in and like right. prove yourself. And you, need, you don't need to prove yourself like doing the best step you can do in class. You need to prove yourself in that group, Mazarka. And you need to know the style, you need to know the counts. Because that's how you will progress quicker. In, and I had a hard time in the beginning, I must say. It wasn't natural to me. And if you're out there and it's not um, easy for you as well to pick things up under stress situation, take your time, breathe in, uh, go into rehearsal, and the only focus you need to do is the counts and the group and the patterns. Because obviously I never really had done much for the ballet group. I, right. I, uh, at school we did some ballet work, but we worked so much on it, and I did some part of this as well. So I was like focused maybe more a bit more on the part of the beat and stuff and you have to join the company and really really um, think on one your think of what your responsibility is and of course you have to keep progressing do your per, an, uh, personal progression like work hard on your technique because suddenly you're alone and your teachers are not there telling you like oh certainly point your foot your arm so you really have to start looking at yourself in a more like subjective way and really think of what's wrong and what's right and then focusing the core of ballet rehearsals because they are the ones that will take you to the next level. Right. Right. Well, and that's the one thing I think also that a lot of the dancers kind of um, deal with begrudgingly because they go, well, I want to be a star. Of course, yeah. everybody wants to be a star, but but it all starts with being the best core de ballet member yeah. you could possibly be. And always do it with a smile. Always right. do it with a smile. I did a lot of, I did many years of court de ballet when I joined the company, obviously, because that was, that's what everybody has to do. And, but I was like, I had some nice, like, from the beginning, some nice solos, bronzidal, first thing that I did was, it was all, I had lucky moments. There was a space in the company, but like all, in all those court de ballet uh, times, what I thought like, okay, I'm, I'm doing this massive group dance and I'm going to be really fine I'll, under the counts, but I'll do it with a massive smile. And I'll try to get attention. That was always my 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 goal. My goal was, was like, okay, you're not gonna just blend in. You will blend in, but you will have like your soul won't be disappearing to the group. I always thought right, that. Right. I don't know if it's right or wrong, but in my I thought I thought like I don't want to disappear. I want to still call the attention. I still want people to notice me. Well, and and I think to be absolutely you know precise and 
describing what you were doing because what you're not you're not recommending that people just kind of uh, you know ah, no, 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 no. And, and and break out of the group but you can be part of the group in a way that's very individual yeah yeah especially if you're doing something like Onegin or Romeo and Juliet these productions that are like um, normal people you're supposed to look like a normal person I mean I'm great at being a normal person I'm great at being a friendly normal person so I'm gonna do that at my best won't try I won't get nervous and I'll all I'll focus is the person that I am and really get through out there because somewhere in the audience someone will look and say like oh that boy has some spunk some right. some personality and then we'll take then next time they'll see me they'll say like oh you know start creating a friendship that's what I always thought that was important for me to not like suddenly become smaller than small you know I had to like keep my fire going so you're now a first soloist after six years this is your seventh season what do you think is the best advice that you can give to dancers who are just starting out in a company based on your experience um, never lose your your fire your your gift because and because obviously it's a professional environment and no one will be there to tell you completely every day what you need to work on so you really need to like focus on like keeping your light going and your fire and um, be really honest with yourself as well. Be really honest on how much you can do and how much you can achieve in a quick time because I love this phrase, a career is not a, a 100 meters sprint, it is a marathon. It takes years and it takes a lot of effort. It's not something, some people, you see those cases that people join and become principals in a season, <gasps> big star, da, da, da. but um, that's one in a million. That's, that's, that's not realistic, that's a talent beyond and what you have to really focus on is in your, really be true to who you are, be true to yourself. And go slowly, go slowly. Because talent doesn't die, talent doesn't die, Ta talent can be nurtured. And if you keep nurturing yourself in the right way, for yourself, the right way for yourself, because my right way might, might be different for someone else, but like, if you keep working on those things that are really important to you, you'll get there and the director will notice you for sure. I heard, um, just recently I heard this phrase, talent does not have an expiration date. Yeah, So um, patience, absolutely. patience is what you would recommend. Patience, yeah, patience. And uh, yeah, patience is the word. Now, we, we're going to ask you to do something we ask all our guests to do right there is your camera. And that is also your 17 or 15 or 11 year old, your teenage self. So what do you know now that you would like to share with your teenage self? Uh, that the way you look and uh, all those insecurities that you have about your looks and about your uh, body do not matter because your gift was not your body, your gift is your soul. And actually it sounds like this is something you've known from the very beginning because that's how that was the Well, but it does, core of your it does take a lot of time to, for you to really like understand that I always thought like, oh, I'm never going to dance in Europe, oh my God. They're all 180 and they're all blonde with blue eyes and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to do this and that's nothing to do with that. You have to focus on what God gave you, God or the spirits gave you. And um, if, uh, and just stick with it, stick with it because that's your, that's your pass to, to have a career, I think. Our guest today was Marcelino Sambe. He was a Youth America Grand Prix participant in 2008. Now he's a first soloist with the Royal Ballet. I'm Sergey Gordiev, and I'll see you next time on Ask the Expert.